started. Today we're going to talk about a few things about Barefoot Basics. Now these are the things that I like to call bare necessities. So that would be B-E-A-R necessities, get it? <laughs> okay, anyways, I think this part is really called like what you need to know for success. All these things aren't going to make or break your cookie decorating, but it they are things that have helped me through the years. So if you're having an issue or something, you know, there may be something here, a suggestion here that you can tweak to your own. And like I said, that's the good thing about this. Use what you need. And if you don't need it, don't. But maybe we can help people out there that are getting started. Now, if you know me, you're not going to be surprised at what I'm about to say. The first thing I want to say is be organized. Um, I went to Walmart and bought a bunch of dollar little tote things and that's when I store my cookie cutters in. I don't have a photo of it right now but I will break it down in a tutorial for you later on the blog. Now I have them broken down by you know, different holidays, Christmas. I have them broken down my animals, like safari animals. I have, sad to say, two totes of rabbit cookie cutters. I have, I don't know how many Christmas cookie cutters, but I have it broken up into Santas and reindeers and sleighs and trees. And this really helps me when I'm getting ready to decorate cookies. I go straight to the box that I need and I don't waste time looking for that one particular cutter that I'm searching for. I have everything organized and I walk straight to my cutters and I pull it out. Now, the hard thing is being organized enough to put the cookie cutters back once you do use them. So um, I usually you know, collect them for a week or I try to wash them really good. I have a basket that I put them in that's near my cookie cutter closet. And so I, I try really hard to put them in immediately when I'm finished using them, but it doesn't always work. So sometimes I just toss them in that basket. And then when I find time in the week, I'll just go over there and organize. And it just really, really helps. Now, my sprinkles are organized too. I had, I bought some little baskets at Target and I keep the sprinkles and the royal icing transfers or you know candy decorations. I keep them organized by color and you may think that's weird but I have all these little mason jars like the jelly jars and I put all the orange stuff in one basket. Let's say that I had carrots for a snowman's nose and orange sprinkles and you know whatever little pumpkins that I have. I keep all the orange stuff in different jars in the basket or I have the chocolate and I have chocolate jimmies and I have all kinds of little chocolate decorations and it goes in the chocolate basket. And my biggest two, which are surprising to me, is red, which red is my favorite color, and black because I have so many different little beads and pearls and, and sixlets and things that I use, you know, for decorating. I have black jelly beans. But I keep these on a shelf in the individual baskets, again, so I'm not searching for a particular color and can't find it. I know exactly where it is. And you look at the picture and you see the little, you know, sprinkles, the nonpareils there. So those are multicolor. Yes, you guessed it. I have a multicolor basket of things like that in it because when I'm ready to decorate, I just want to grab it and do what I need to do and put it back. And being organized is it just helps so much. And these muffin tins in the bas or in the picture, I usually drop. I don't know, four or five little, which a small one, it has little six muffin tins, you know, six little cups in it. So I usually drop the um, cupcake liners in there and put my supplies in. That way, even when I'm decorating, it's right there in front of me and I don't have to search for it or anything. So just being organized really cuts the stress out of decorating and it has saved me a lot of stress doing things this way. So I just thought I'd share that with you guys. Do you use food safe markers? I love these things. I keep my food safe markers and paint brushes in mason jars and I just toss them up in the cabinet that way they're out of the way. The mason jars are really portable so if you need to you know take them to the kitchen table or wherever to decorate you just grab a jar and go. So um, <clears throat> and as far as the paint brushes I often get ask what kind of brand I use but I usually just go to Michaels or AC Moore or Hobby Lobby and I just look and see what kind I think I'll need for the project. Same thing with food safe markers. I have several different versions of food safe markers and I like them all. I, I honestly don't have a favorite. 
Never, ever, never, ever, never, ever underestimate the power of sprinkles. Sprinkles are an amazing way to get texture on your cookie, to add a little sparkle. They come in so many different things. There's sprinkles, jimmies, nonpareils, sixlets, pearls, sanding sugar, coarse sanding sugar. I mean, the list goes on and on. And don't forget the royal icing transfers that you can add. <clears throat> I love looking around Facebook and Instagram and all your blogs and everything to see how you guys use sprinkle sprinkles to give texture. So you guys are the kings and queens of this. Keep it up. I love seeing what you do. And since we're talking about sprinkles, sometimes you need a little bit of help getting those tiny, tiny little beads in the right places. And that's where tweezers and food tongs come in. Um, for years, I used the little plastic ones, and I still do, the little plastic ones that um, I got from Karen's Cookies. And you can still buy those in different places. I think they're on Amazon. So you don't have to invest a lot to use tweezers, but they really, really help when you're you know, trying to put a little um, four millimeter pearl or something in an eye and you don't want it to end up on its nose so the food tongs and tweezers come in handy now the food tongs that you see in the back that are kind of you know have like that shape to it those took it took me a little while i get a lot of questions about those but it took me a little while to get used to those because you you don't want to hold them like tweezers like you're trying to pull a splinter out of your finger or anything you almost want to hold them they kind of rest on your hand and once you learn to let it rest on your hand you're going to save yourself a lot of trouble well at least i know i did so anyways those are just some really good tools to keep in your toolbox well now it's time to talk about turkey lasers toothpicks and boo-boo sticks once you outline and flood your cookies you may notice some little air bubbles that have formed in the royal icing you can use a turkey laser, a toothpick, or a boo-boo stick just to pop those bubbles. Also, if there's like little tiny corners in your cookie in your design, you can use these tools to like push the icing into that corner. That way, once your stuff dries, it'll be nice and smooth. Um, also, I want to talk about the spatulas again because I know that I'm getting ready to mention it a whole lot in the upcoming videos, but you need to make sure when you make things that there's no grease on any of your surfaces because the grease will mess with your royal icing and it could run just a tiny, tiny bit, it could, you know, destroy a whole batch of icing. It can make the color splotchy. So like I said, we're going to get into more of that later, but just make sure that your spatulas are nice and clean. You may want to, you know, even rub it down with a little bit of, you know, lemon juice or vodka before you start just to make sure that there's, you know, not any oil or butter or anything like that on it. So Okay, speaking of good tools to have in your toolbox, yes, the tweezers are great. Yes, the turkey laces, I don't think I could decorate without them, or even the food safe markers. They're all just great things, but the greatest thing ever was when Gail at One Tough Cookie told us about using a spray bottle to add water to your royal icing to thin it down. Now, I did the traditional way that everybody said when I first started decorating cookies, they would say, you know, take a teaspoon and just put a little bit of water at a time and stir until you get the right consistency. Well, I don't know. For me, that was hard because even with a teaspoon, I put too much water or not enough water or whatever. So Gail did this amazing post and I'll link to it below where she said, you know, just use this, use a spray bottle and you can just with one squirt, just change your life. It is like the greatest thing ever. So I suggest if you're looking for a way to add water to your royal icing, and again, I'm sure each and every one of you out there have two or three or 30 um, of these spray bottles because seriously, they are so wonderful. Changed my life. Okay, um, next we've already talked about how I use a fondant sm smoother, you know, to kind of flatten out cookies and give yourself a flat surface. If you need, you know, if you want to hear that again, go back to video number one. I also did a tutorial on it and I'll put it in a link below. Okay, let's talk about those beautiful magical colors that we can make in our cookie dough or with royal icing. Those are created with, of course, gel colors. Now, when if you look at this picture, 
in the top right hand corner you'll see something called liquid color these are the things like the colors like the McCormick colors and stuff that you can buy at the grocery store I'm not telling you not to use them but I strongly advise against it because when you use those what happens is you're adding a lot of liquid into your royal icing so if you get your royal icing the perfect consistency and then you add the liquid color it's just really gonna make your icing um, consistency off it's not gonna be the way you want it so then you're gonna have to go through the thing of add more powdered sugar try to balance it out so liquid color is just not really recommended I use Wilton concentrated gel colors or um, AmeriColor soft paste food colors um, I recently got some of the artisan accent gel from um, Hillary at the cookie countess and I really like it the black has not left a bitter taste the red is really good so I haven't been using them very long but I've used them on several different projects and I really, really like them. So just before you, you know, invest a lot, if you're, you know, a beginning decorator, before you invest a lot, you may really want to look at the different kinds and see what you can get. Get a bottle or something of each and, you know, make your royal icing and see which one you like the best. But try to stay away from those liquid colors. Now, some of you may use them and that's perfectly fine. Use what works for you. That's the great thing about this. This is what works for you to help you make the perfect cookies? For me, I stay away from the liquid color. Okay, since we've talked about color, let's talk about the color wheel. I know a lot of us struggle when it's time to decorate cookies on finding, you know, cool colors that are in style or really popular right now, or just kind of creating something on your own. You know, you wanna make your, your own color. And sometimes it gets really hard and confusing when you try to do that because you don't know what colors go well together and what colors complement each other. That's where the color wheel comes in. It's such a great tool and it's going to do so much more than to show you pretty colors. It can actually help you plan a theme for your cookies. Now, I know that we all know about complementary colors. Those are the wheel, those are the colors that are opposite on the color wheel, like, you know, red and green. If you look at the color wheel, you'll see the color red, and if you go directly on the opposite side, you'll see green. Those colors are opposite, and we know they work well together because think about Christmas, red and green, I mean, such traditional colors. Now, let's think about orange. Um, what's the opposite of orange? Orange and blue. So, you know, yellow and violet. This will just help you. And anytime you put those colors together, they're going to go well together because they're going to complement each other. Now let's talk about analogous colors. That's when a group of three colors are side by side on the color wheel. So let's take a look for just a second and let's look at yellow. So if you have yellow, then yellow orange and yellow green are gonna go really well with yellow. Same thing with red. You can get a red orange and a red violet and they're gonna go really well together. So again, these are just colors that, you know, really complement each other and, you know, you could create a beautiful, beautiful theme of cookies, you know, using these color this color scheme. So now let's talk about tints, tones, and shades. Okay, on this color chart, if you look by the violet, you can see the word tint, tone, and shade. And basically what that is, is if you want to tint the color, you add a little white. Tone is when you add a little gray, and shade is when you add a little black. Now, look at the yellow up there. Um, if you add white to yellow, of course, it's just going to get a lighter white. If you add gray, it's just going to kind of mute it or make it a muddy kind of gray. But if you add black, you're going to get an unbelievable green. Yes, it's still kind of a green that's in the yellow family, but it's a beautiful, beautiful green. So tints, tones, and shades will help you develop some colors that, you know, are your own. You can, you can just play around with it and find colors that you like. Now, let's talk about... Um, let's skip over here and talk about the warm versus cool colors. We know the warm colors are like red, orange, and yellow. The cool colors are violet, blue, and green. So if you want to make a winter scene, then you're probably going to pick the violet, blue, and, and violet, blue, and green and try to make something, you know, just kind of look cold. And of course, warm, you think of the sun, yellow, and orange. So this is just a good little guide that will help you tremendously with your colors. Now the split complementary colors, let's talk about those for a second. If you look in the center of the color wheel, you're going to see a little arrow. 
And so the arrow, the, p the tip of the arrow will point to one color, such as violet. And then if you follow it, instead of going to the yellow to pick an opposite color, you can see it's a triangle and you see yellow, orange, and yellow, green. Those are called split complementary colors. And again, they go beautiful together. So if you just twist the wheel around and you land on one of these, you, you'll see the triangle and you can use those colors to come up with your own color wheel colors. And I mean, it, it works fabulously. I mean, you're, you're gonna have some beautiful colors that really match each other. And you're not gonna have that one oddball color that you think just ruins your design. So if you, practice with this and you learn how to use it, I mean, it can be one of the best tools that you can have. Every time I see those little icing bottles, I just have to laugh because those are the reason that I started decorating cookies. I used to live in Knoxville, Tennessee, and my husband took a position where we moved an hour and a half away. Well, I was trying to be brave, so I continued to drive an hour and a half to work and an hour and a half home. And so... It was okay and I did it. It was a little bit stressful because you know, you just think, okay, three hours in the car, what can I get done, you know, in my day with that chunk of time instead of sitting here driving? So gas went up to four fifty a gallon and we decided it was time for me to quit. So I was gonna look around where we live now and try to find, you know, a part time job or something, just you know, that way I would be closer to home. So I quit my job and I was home cleaning the house. <laughs> and Martha Stewart came on and there was a lady on Martha Stewart called Danny Fiore and she was showing how to decorate these little Santa cookies and you know it blew my mind when she started to decorate because she pulled out icing bottles and I thought oh wow I could decorate with those I don't need piping bags and to make a mess and do all that those bottles are the neatest things ever so I sat down and watched the show and I watched how she decorated and she did she made the cutest little Santa cookie ever and of course Martha Stewart said oh isn't that my Santa cookie cutter and Danny said yes it is and you can get them at Macy's so I got up and ran into the kitchen to my computer went to Macy's tried to buy the Santa cookie cutter and of course they were sold out but I'm a determined person and I wasn't about to give up so I went on eBay and I found the cutter and it was in a set it was a Martha Stewart's like holiday set or something so I placed a bid on it and immediately I was outbid by this girl named Bridget and so I ended up getting into a bidding war with Bridget which I'm competitive and so maybe eBay and places like that aren't the best places for me to hang out <laughs> but I ended up winning that cookie cutter in the bid but I paid like $66 for it and so that is by far the most expensive cutter that I own and when my husband came home you know the day that I wanted or whatever I looked at him and I'm like um yeah I kind of did something dumb today <laughs> He looked at me, he said, what did you do? I said, I got in a bidding war on eBay for a Santa Claus cookie cutter and I ended up spending $66 on it. And seriously, I was really, I hated telling him, my stomach was in knots and I was so upset because that is not me. Usually I'm a smart shopper, I like bargains, but I had to have this cutter because I saw Danny Fiore decorate with it. And I convinced myself that was the only cutter that I would be able to use to decorate cookies. And so my husband, being the sweet guy that he is, he just looked at me and he laughed and he said, well, are, did buying the cutter make you happy? And I said, yeah. He said, then don't worry about it. So I looked at him and I said, I will make this cutter work for us. It's going to work for us. So the next thing I did was, you know, I bought the bottles and the tips and started decorating. And then I discovered I hated the decorating bottles. And it's not that I hate them because of anything that they do. It's just where I live, the icing separates so fast in it. If you see the blue icing in the bottom picture, it just really separates. <clears throat> well, Sweet Sugar Bell, Callie, has, you know, her own product line now, and she has these amazing spatulas that are really skinny, and now you can stick it down, you can stick the spatula in the bottle and stir the icing up. Before, you would have to shake the icing out, and I just felt like I was wasting so much icing because it separated just in no time. So anyways, the icing bottles that led me to decorating, I no longer use. I'm trying to get in the habit of using them again, you know, just when I have, you know, really quick projects and stuff but I just think it's funny that you know what got me started has also 
I, I just don't even use it anymore. Then right before cookie con i ordered some tipless piping bags from truly mad plastics sharon and i'm telling you i am totally in love with these things so you will see me using those on the blog and stuff more it did take me a while to get used to them and not be not sharon's but just bags in general the first ones i had had this really weird seam in it and so no matter how i cut the bag or did the bag it made the icing come out with like a little bit of a curl to it so once i found sharon's i'm totally in love her bags are awesome so now i use just you know regular piping bags and tipless bags and I'll try to use the bottles more, but I'm not going to promise any. Okay, another thing that we all have a hard time doing is usually writing on cookies. I get a lot of people asking me how to write on cookies. Well, here again, I'm just kind of an odd duck because, you know, I like the traditional decorating bags and now the tipless bags, but to write on cookies, I find myself using the parchment paper cones. I can get just the tiniest, tiniest opening at the bottom of those. I can make them as the opening as big or as little as I want, and I just absolutely love them. And I'm going to show you in just a second a little video on how to make them, but it's opposite of what you think it would be because you start with a triangle shaped piece of parchment paper. I usually just cut a square and then I cut the square in half from, you know, one corner from a top corner to a bottom corner and it makes a triangle. So you lay that flat on your table and then you pull one of the corners up and kind of fold it under. See in the second photo there how I'm like twisting it under and then you match it up to the top corner. Then you repeat that for the second corner and then you know just fold the fold the little top down. You'll see it in the video here. I'm going to start it for you. And you see how you lock it into place. So here I've just got a piece of parchment paper and we're going to cut it into a square. And then open the square up and now cut two triangle pieces. Okay, and there you grab, you know, one of the from the long end and you pull it up to that short one and fold it under. And you just kind of wiggle your thumbs and your fingers there together to make the tip really small, bend over the top, and there you go. And parchment paper cones, like I said, are really good, you know, really good for writing on cookies and doing teeny little detailed work. I mean, they're just, they're perfect for that. About how to transfer a design onto your cookie. Now, there's all kinds of things out there. There's, um, is it Pico, the LED Pico? pocket projector, there's camera, Lucinda, and there's copy cakes. Now, you can purchase these if you want. I'm going to tell you right now that I have a copy cake. It's the big tall one there in the picture, and that thing is huge. I mean, it needs a closet, not not quite a closet. I'm exaggerating, but it needs a space of its own. I like it. I've used it before. I mainly use it for logo cookies because all my cookies are the same consistency. I don't have to worry about cutting in any kind of a template or anything. I just place the cookies under there and get the main pattern on or get the main design onto the cookies and then I fill it out. Now the pocket projector is a really good thing. The first person that I saw use that was Anita from Baking Sweet Hope. She just changed her name. But I saw her do a review on that or she showed how to use it and she it's on her YouTube channel if you want to check it out. But basically you plug it in and it, it's, it takes an image on your iPad and it transfers it right onto your cookie. The good thing about that is when, when you use a copy cake, you fiddle with the size of the image. If the size is too big or too small, then it's not going to work on your cookie. So you may end up making four or five different copies of an image to try to find the right size that's going to work on your cookies. See the little black nose thing sticking down? You can twist that and move that, which will adjust your size, but it's not going to adjust it much. Well, when Anita did her review on the Pico, it's really cool because she would just enlarge or shrink the image on her iPad to fit her cookie, which is brilliant. She even you know, put it in upside down to show us you can actually rotate your image and make it right side up on the cookie. So, I mean, that's a great way to do it. Camera Lucinda. 
I saw Sarah at Click It It Street demonstrate a long, long, long time ago how she used her iPad or an iPhone to use this to transfer a cookie, I mean to transfer a pattern onto her cookie. Again, it's a lot like the pocket projector, but it's, it's a little bit different. I think the pocket projector, if you buy those, it can be anywhere. I've seen them from like 119 up to 300 plus dollars. So, you know, that can get as, as detailed or as in, you know, you can spend as much as you want on that or as little. Um, the Camera Lucinda is an app on your phone and I actually put it on my iPad and I can use it on my iPad and it was like $6.99. I think when I purchased it it was $4.99 but I checked today and it was $6.99. So you know there's something affordable out there for everybody. The Coffee Cake Projector, I'm not sure how much it is but um, let me check real quick. Okay, Jerry's Artorama has the copy cake for $185. So, you know, that's just three ways that you can transfer your cookies. But I don't want you to think that's the only three ways that you can transfer it because I'm going to show you a little bit more about how to transfer here in just a second. But before we get into that, I'm going to talk about cookie cutters. Today, this day and age, we live in a wonderful world of cookie cutters. If you want a custom cookie cutter, all you have to do is call one of the 3D printers out there and they do a really good job at making you a custom cookie cutter. They also have tons of designs in their shop. I mean, you can get just about anything that you want. When um, I first started, we would have to take cookie cutters and cut out little chunks or pieces from other cookie cutters to piece together something that we wanted to make. But nowadays, I mean, these cookie decorators these 3d printers and stuff have made it super 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 easy for it okay if you don't want to invest in any of that stuff there's easy ways that you can use your actual cookie cutter to come up with the design the boat cutter up there come from Tracy at whisk of whisked away cutters and when she sent it to me because of the little flag on top, I mean, that's the cutest little flag ever once you see her cookie. But when I opened the box, the cutter was in the box upside down, and I immediately saw a turkey face. And then I pulled out a piece of paper and a pencil, and I sketched, and I saw a bouquet of flowers. So just with that one design, just because you sketch, doodle, draw, scribble, and outline, you could really and truly come up with some really cute, unique ideas for cookies. And Benjamin Franklin said it right. If you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. So just get out a piece of paper and trace your cookie cutter and then try to fill it in like with whatever design you want. I can't draw very well at all. I'll be the first to tell you, I didn't make it through art class. So I can't draw the outside of something, but if I have the outside shape, then for me, it's easy to connect the cutter from one side to the other and you can come up with all kinds of designs. Next, I've got a little video to show you, and I'm just going to hit play here. Okay, so this is another one of those designs from Tracy at Whisk Away Cutters. When I got it from her, the cutter, again, when I open the box, Tracy keeps sending me cookie cutters upside down like that because I see different things. This cutter is actually a double popsicle cutter. Well, when I opened the box, I did not see a double popsicle cutter. I saw Spock. <laughs> so bear with me. We'll turn it upside down. And now do you see him? So I trace the cutter and I cut out the shape. But instead of actually cutting all the pieces off the shape, I left them attached on one side. I knew that I wanted all their pants, um, you know, the same, same size. So I left them like that. I mean, I just cut off the bottom and then I wanted the neck in the same place and the hairline pretty much in the same place. So I cut the top off for the hair and then the neck, I didn't separate the neck from the body because I didn't want to mess with two different pieces. So I just cut it over to one side and then it became easy to use a food safe marker to draw the pattern onto all the cookies so that way they were very uniform when I was done. Just because we made a paper template, which doesn't cost really anything, then you can make the designs and stuff that you want, that way all your cutters look the same, or all your cookies will look the same. Okay, so there you have it. That was part two. I know that there's a lot of information there again, and I apologize. So I'll be back soon for part three, and it may be the final one in this episode. It may be... I don't know, I may be long-winded and have to break it down into two shorter ones. So anyways, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed part one and two and, and be on the lookout for part three coming up soon.